Do you think the Albanese government should be worrying more about issues like youth crime in Queensland and, and Alice Springs before they try and lecture Israel about how to defeat the terrorists in the Middle East? Well, I think Alice Springs is a, a particular case study of, uh, of this Prime Minister. Uh, the Prime Minister spent more time at the tennis than he did in Alice Springs. There are people in Alice Springs uh, who are treated as second-class citizens. They're the people who own the stores, who own the homes that have been broken into, who are the owners of the motor vehicles that have been stolen, wrecked or put on fire. And yes, I think you should get your own house in order before you start lecturing others. Mm. Uh, and I think when we look at the youth crime issue, we've had a bill on the table now. We've said that we want to work with the government in a bipartisan way to demand that Meta and the other companies take down that content which glorifies or justifies some of these crimes where cars are being stolen. They're doing it so that they can post the video because that gives them kudos with their friends. Starve them of that opportunity and take away the, the motivation or the interest that they've got in stealing the car in the first place. Mm, they're very quick to take down misinformation when it related to the voice though. Of course. Um, now the Prime Minister this morning said that there could be a Hamas free Gaza. <laughs> Just you know, a short time later we then heard the leading dele Palestinian delegate in Canberra say that Hamas was very much a part of the future of Gaza. It was a philosophy. It's in in the population. Do you think the Prime Minister and Penny Wong are naive in their thinking? No, I don't, because I think they've cobbled together a policy um, which, as we said before, is all about trying to win votes from the Greens and it's about trying to hold inner city seats and they're putting that objective ahead of uh, the national interests. And so I think that's what is at play here. Uh, if Penny Wong was making a serious contribution to the debate and ha had a serious proposition to put in relation to statehood for the Palestinian territory, surely she would have spoken with members of the community here to understand their thinking and to bounce off them her idea. Mm. But it's clear that none of that happened because, as you point out, the representative here in Australia is at complete odds with where Penny Wong claims to be. I think they're still, you know, frankly, living their university campus lives mm -hmm. and it's time for them to grow up because Penny Wong has made a catastrophic mistake which I think has harmed our international reputation and certainly significantly damaged our relationship with Israel. Last night in your speech you spoke about how we do have anti-vilification laws, we do have anti-harassment, anti-incitement laws both federally and at state levels and yet we haven't seen any leaders actually use them. There have been virtually no arrests uh, in the past six months since October 7. What do you think is going on here? Why is there this reluctance from law enforcement to actually use the laws that are available to them? I suspect the upper echelons of the police service, uh, particularly in New South Wales and in Victoria, are taking what they believe is to be the lead from their police minister, from their prime minister. And that's the problem that we've got. Now, if an action is brought and a matter goes before the court, and there is a finding of guilt, it's appealed, say, all the way to the High Court and it's found to be unconstitutional or there's a problem with the law, then the law can be amended at that point. Whilst ever we allow these people to get away with the doxing, uh, with the threatening behaviour, uh, with the boycotting uh, and with the general anti-Semitic behaviour otherwise, it will continue and it will flourish. And if we don't have uh, a zero tolerance, then I, I just think it's a green light and for the Prime Minister to abrogate his basic responsibility uh, to people of Jewish faith but in turn and as a result of that abrogation to all Australians I think he fails his first duty. Mm. We've seen three boats arrive on our shores since November. Uh, in the past there have been boats that have come but they've been intercepted at sea. That doesn't seem to be happening at the moment. Are you concerned that under Labor, we could start to see an influx. Well, I'm very concerned because I think if, uh, if Labor allows this problem to flourish again, they're going to find it very hard to get it back under control. Uh, they have abandoned Operation Sovereign Borders. The Prime Minister talks about Operation Sovereign Borders as if it's the same policy that it was under the Coalition. It's not. And what the people smugglers take from the change and the watering down to Operation Sovereign Borders under Labor is that there's a green light for them and there's a business opportunity again. As we know, at every Labor Party conference, he's argued against Operation Sovereign Borders and against tough border protection policies. 
and I think the people smugglers can see that on this front that he's probably not telling the truth as well. Yeah. We've seen a lot of industry groups speak out and complain about the fact that they're being made to sign NDAs, non-disclosure agreements, just to have a look at government policy. Um, when it came down to Tanya Plibersek's Nature Positive plan, people couldn't even bring their mobile phones into the room to have a look at this detail. Do you think this is quite absurd secrecy from a government and, and is it designed to shut down public criticism? There's no doubt it's designed to shut down criticism, it's designed to divide and conquer. The Teals were elected on a platform of transparency and openness and would support this government in a minority government uh, at the next election, but don't say anything about the way in which the government's conducting themselves now. Uh, I've never seen anything like it where you've got religious leaders who are dealing with the government, negotiating with the government at the moment on the religious discrimination bill, the archbishop or the imam or the rabbi is required to sign a non-disclosure agreement, can't go back to their church or synagogue and speak to uh, their, their um, advisers about what it is that they've read or seen. Some of them are seeing part of the bill, others are seeing the entire bill. Some people, it seems, have a hotline to the prime minister, but not others. and. There's nothing commercial in confidence that is being discussed here. Mm. There's nothing of national security importance that's being discussed here. Uh, and it's not a market sensitive uh, position that, or a national security position that would otherwise warrant that. So I, I, I think it's plain and simple, um, a technique that's been drafted by Mark Dreyfus uh, to try and stop public scrutiny and criticism of where the government is at. Uh, it's the case in relation to the Nature Positive Bill um, as it is in relation to a couple of other areas where the government's negotiating at the moment and uh, it's a lack of transparency uh, because the government's got bad policies which frankly again are all targeted at trying to please those green voters uh, as opposed to what's in the best interests of our country. Yeah. Right, thank you very much for your time, really appreciate it. Thank you Sherry, thank Thanks, you. Peter. Thank you.